What's good, y'all? It's your boy Blue, the engineer. We here at my home, Brown Sugar Room at Lounge Studios here in New York City. You can catch me mixedbyblue.com, mixed by blue on Twitter, mixed by blue on Instagram, everything mixed by blue, you know. I want to give a big shout out to my boy Ming Photography. You know, whatever you got to take a picture of, he got you, man. He got the eye for you, you know what I mean? All right, peace. Hey, how are you guys? This is Ming from Ming Fai Chan, and today we have a special guest, Blue, in the building. What's up, so, y'all? Blue, introduce yourself. My name is Blue, McKaylin Blue, Blue Spruce. That's how the plaques read, you dig? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I'm a mixing uh, mixing engineer, sometimes recording if I need to. And thank you for you know being here with us. Oh, Seriously. amazing. It's happy, so I'm t- happy to have you guys here. Thank you so much. So let's talk about how you begin your career. Like, you, you're in the West Coast, yeah. and then you started as a DJ. And then now, like, you're doing your <laughs> so another yeah, story. Was, this is something was, else right now. Yeah, so I mean, tell was, us your story. I, I started off, uh, you know, real young, doing DJing little mixtapes in my in my basement, and then kind of that led me to uh, to becoming a sound, or to, that led me to wanting to be a producer, which I didn't, you know, found I didn't I found that I didn't have the passion to go home and make beats every day. I right. uh, just wasn't it wasn't my thing um but i really took to engineering which is very closely related to producing but um slightly different it was a little more technical allowed me to flex the technical I'm, i love math and you know puzzles and stuff like that and that's kind of what engineering is it's all puzzle and math. you know everything is all math and right. so uh it, it was very technical but still very creative at the same time so i took to that and kind of you know uh the rest is history. Yeah, I want to know about you. You said you told me something about the DJ. Like back in the day, is different so much different. <laughs> what is it now? Yeah, so I mean, I'm it's, very it's just interested. that back yeah. in the day we we use actual records. Yeah. So uh, like I, I I ordered my first turntables from the back of the source magazine. I was uh, telling telling your partner Veg earlier, yes. and uh, they were bootleg. So it was, you know you you had to buy the vinyls. You bought two copies of every vinyl because then you could juggle back and forth to eat to to between the songs and stuff. And so, you know, when you went to DJ an event, you had to bring a crate of heavy ass wow. vinyl. So you had to bring that everywhere. Uh, and, you know, it was it was that was half of the battle was getting to the venue. Yes. You know, so that uh, that that's changed now. Now you can bring your computer. And the beautiful thing about like Serato is you can still get that feel of vinyl, but mm. you don't uh, you don't have to carry a crate of records everywhere. but we still have to get to the venue though we still yeah, have to travel yeah, there yeah, that's true, still true, traveling true, is true 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 <laughs> true you gotta get the laptop yes. to the venue that's yeah, exactly it. that's but it though that's <laughs> it that's it though but yeah it's a lot different now as everything i mean engineering even from when i started engineering uh has changed i had to do uh when i was in school we did sessions straight to two inch tape and it was pro tools was out when i started but it was still relatively new pro tools is the main software that everybody uses to record and mix um uh in the in the industry it's the industry standard and pro tools kind of only came on the scene in like 96 97 and and that was still early most studios didn't adopt it till early 2000s and so i started engineering you know oh three oh four and uh it was still you know a lot of major studios were still going to tape and you know still doing all that but now every major record majority of all the records you hear are all mixed completely inside the box which is basically a term for mixing it inside the computer without ever you know going out to a mixing board or going out to to uh outboard gear sometimes they'll use outboard gear but not a lot right so and then you came to new york and then you went to nyu and yes with sir. honors yes sir so, graduated so, so with so honors shout out to us, going to class uh, oh so <laughs> tell us about that that you know um nyu was kind of like the 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 um breeding ground for me connecting to everybody in new york so i was in school i was able to uh learn a lot in school but most of the things i've learned were outside of the classroom you know not to take away from the school but it's just mostly that's the nature of the of the work um so and why you provided me a base to where i can move around and connect with people and you know be in new york i moved from seattle i didn't know anybody so it's like being able to connect in that way was a, was a blessing so that provided me the setting and then i made the best of it so what happened after graduation? You started working here. Yeah, already? I started working here at my uh, my home base of mm-hmm. uh, Brown Sugar, the Brown Sugar Room at Lounge Studios, um, and I've been here ever since. I started here in '06 and have been here 12 years. And then you've been working with artists, obviously, and then you know you've been interning. Oh yeah, turn about, talk about your intern life. Um, well, I, I had a couple of internships. I interned at Baseline, which was uh, Jay Z. It was at the time it was owned by Just Blaze, actually. 
Um, and Jay Z had just sold it uh, to Just Blaze, who's a legendary producer. If any of your viewers don't know, I feel bad for you. <laughs> but uh, Just <laughs> so Blaze, guys, look it up. Look it yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you shouldn't. I mean, I, it's sad to say that you would have to look Just Blaze up, but he is a legend. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. He, uh, I interned under Young Guru, who's Jay Z's engineer, uh, and you know, soaked up as much as I could from him. Went to go get coffee and you know. Uh, snacks and whatnot for everybody in the studio for a few months and just kind of try to soak up as much as I could um and then I started actually doing intern work here at Lounge Studios for Walter my, my part who's my partner now uh right. but I was kind of doing intern work for him at the time and just helping him whatever he needed around the studio and then in turn he let me mix records out of here because it yeah. was a treated room instead of my bedroom right. which was not treated and didn't sound great so it was much what I would do is do most of my mixes at home and then bring them here to kind of like finalize them. Right. So yeah, that was you know internships helped me get started and helped me learn you know a lot of what I know now. And you said that earlier that internship is is like really important. That's the only way you can learn, and you're still learning every day about. Yeah, I mean I I have so much value for internships. Like I mean if you can get a paid internship, great. But if you can't, if you really want to learn about something, shadow somebody who knows right. about it. And if you want to be in a room with somebody who's an expert in their field you better be ready to go, at least go to the store for them. Like, make their life a little easier because you can't expect them to teach you anything. Why do I even want you here? You're not right. even serving any purpose. So if you step in the door like, look, I don't know anything about this, but I'll go get you coffee whenever you want it. Right. That might make somebody more likely to keep you around and you're going to learn a lot from just being around. Education is key. That's how you learn everything. That's Man, how I learn everything. <laughs> listen, you got to study. You got to study yes. the people that you, if you want to be like somebody or if you want to be better than somebody, you better study that person. Right. So after that, um, you've been working, you've been interning, and yeah, I'm curious about how you, uh, what is the process of, you know, the sound engineering? Everybody said they have a studio at home right now. Yeah. You know, what's the difference between, you know, mixing at home as to coming to a loud studio, something like st studio like this, to do something, to, to put out a track? It's really just the, it's the environment, first of all. Every, most studios are acoustically treated, so the difference between this room and your bedroom is just that your bedroom probably sounds bad. You know, if you if you put if you put speakers, even if you had the same speakers I had, put them in your bedroom. There's going to be frequencies that build up in the corners of the room. The record's not going to sound accurate, so you're mixing in a room that's not treated. So first off, you're in a studio, you're getting a treated room. Hopefully, most studios are treated. Some some don't sound so great, but we fortunately have a great sounding room here. Um, and then the other thing is the expertise of a of a guy like myself who knows what they're doing. Um, you know, there's not to say that up and coming guys can't. There's a lot of new artists that come out these days that are kind of like DIY artists, do-it-yourself artists that come out of the basement and their homeboy mix the record and that record ends up going, getting really big. Right. And shout out to those guys that mix those records, even if it's their first record they ever mixed or one of the early, you know, they're young engineers. They may not be experts yet, but they're doing their thing. But the difference between your homeboy mixing a record and somebody who, who <clears throat> can come, who's been doing this for a really long time, is they may do, you know, you may get it right once, but a, a, a professional is going to get it right every time. You know what I mean? Right. So, but then again, like I said, shout out to the young guys because they're pushing the sound. So, you know, at whatever level somebody's doing it, the good thing about having, you know, the way the game is now is that everybody has equal access. Right. I can get my song on the same platforms as Jay-Z, as Kanye, as, you know, uh, actually, I don't even want to shout out yet, you know, this week <laughs> is not a good yet, week for my man, yeah, but Drake, you know, Kendrick, anybody who- All these uh, outlets. Yeah, you have the same outlets as them, so it's really up to you pushing your song, you know, your music and creating a fan base for yourself. Yeah, at so, the end of the day, the artists have to do, put in some work too. Yeah, just... yeah, I mean, so as, a, you know, coming to a studio, you're getting, you're getting the expertise, really, and the room. That's yeah. really what it is. You know, I feel like anybody can engineer- it's just about the experience of doing it at a high level. You know, it's not it's not like an elite club where you need to know some secret knowledge. If you're if you, you know if you're putting faders up in your in your in your computer, then you're mixing. So it's whether it sounds good or it doesn't sound good. Right. That's really all that matters. Right. You know, it, that's everything else doesn't really matter. So when you're here alone in the studio, do you have like a archive of all the mixes that you like you put you put together? Uh, I mean, there's a whole d drawer over there full of hard drives. <laughs> they have a bunch, see it, but it's a over bunch there. of a bunch of uh, archive sessions. I don't like, like to I don't like to to throw anything away. Right. Um, I tell a lot of the artists I work with. I tell them I do just because I want them to 
get their own hard drive right. and be responsible for their own <laughs> files because that's what you really should do. But I'm, I'm, I'm a hoarder when it comes to files because it's like I would hate to have somebody approach me for a file and not, and not have it because right. that's, the, you know, that's, 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 that's like lose, you know, that's like getting your car stolen. Is yes. if you lose your hard drive, it's like that's, it. that's like getting your house broken into. It's, it feels terrible. That's what you own. That's that's the foundation of everything. Yes, sir. That's it. So yeah. that's very important. Backing up and Back hard drives. Up. <laughs> I'm bad at that. <clears throat> Don't be like me. But two, three backups. I had somebody tell me the other day. I used the rule of one, two, three, for backing up. And I was like, I was like, I was like, what does that mean? You have one backup, you have two backups, you have three backups. I was like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> very direct. But go ahead, I, I, I appreciate you. <laughs> But yeah, and then you gotta back your stuff up. Awesome. And then over the years, um, <laughs> up until last year, you got uh, you worked with Solange, and then you had a Grammy win. Yeah, man, she you she know, she won the she won the Grammy for uh, Cranes in the Sky. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was a blessing to be a part of that whole process. And you know, having I feel like Cranes, I feel like it deserved to win. Mm-hmm. It was a, such a uh, impactful song of the year, uh, you know, and 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 it touched so many people that it was a. But it was a blessing, man. It was it was. Uh, one of those moments where you have to reflect and just say, you know, this this is really happening. This is really something real. You know, something that you could have only dreamed of. How how is it how is it working with her? Like, what oh, is she's amazing. She's dope. She's such a like, I I I don't think anybody's ever quite done a piece on her that really fully explored her creation process. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it it's such an interesting, it's such an amazing you know thing to be a part of. Because she creates in a way that I, I don't think a lot of artists are creating on that level. You know, the way she writes, the way she uh, produces her records and everything. Because she does everything. You know, not to say she doesn't have help, but she is the main uh, writer, producer, like, of everything she does. And um, me, my job is just to keep up with her. That's the first job is, like, keep up with her brain. Her brain go, moves a mile a minute. And so me is just being able to keep up with her ideas, always having the mic on. Because if she might come up with an idea, and if the mic's not on, right. that's gone out of her head. Right. So it's like, you always got to be recording. got to be alert. Got to catch everything. And kind of, you have to start to speak the same language as any artist you work with. So me and her definitely speak the same language. Um, and it's, 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 just, it's just an awesome thing to watch happen. So watching her create a record and being a part of that process is, uh, is a really special thing. Right. And then moving forward, you also did a, let's talk about the Hamilton mixtape. Okay, that's, yeah. That's, that, that, yeah. That's, that's, congratulations on that, too. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, that was a, a different kind of my involvement in that process was different. Solange, I'm very, like, I travel to work with her and, like, you know, sit and we record. I, you know, do kind of everything. Um, she has a couple other recording engineers that me, between me and them, we were recording everything. Whereas the Hamilton mixtape was one of those. I came in at the end of the process and just got to mix, which is my, you know, that's, that's my goal. Anyway, I love mixing. That's, like, kind of all I do these days. Um but I got to mix for some of the you know most legendary artists, Nas, Common, Black Thought, uh, Davies, Lin Manuel, who wrote mm, and produced and did everything for Hamilton. Mm. Um, and so it was a blessing, man. It was just like I, it's just this cool experience of being able to work on kind of the two two things that I really liked. I'm a really big fan of Hamilton, so I was a you know loved that musical and and went to see it three times. And so that mixed with some of my favorite rappers that I grew up listening to, it was like. It was like the best experience. Yeah, you you said that Nas sent you vocals and, and oh man, it was amazing getting Nas's vocal. Get, the first one was getting Black Thought's vocals in yes. the, in the email it was like yo, wow. and then just the hearing the mic presence of these guys is like you realize that there's a difference between somebody who just started right. rapping and who, somebody who has that mic vocal control. Like Nas's voice, just the raw takes of Nas's voice sounded like. Nah, it's like it was like right. this. It was like this presence he had on yes. the mic, without me even touching anything on it, that sounded so good. And so all I had to do was kind of just tweak it up a little bit and do my thing to it. But it was, you know, this, these guys are pros at, at at ripping the mic. Like there's nobody better. Well, congratulations again <laughs> for that. That's really impressive. Yeah, because thank it's, you, it's different when you're like dream of working with someone, but when you're actually working with someone, that's like to the next level. It definitely is, man. It's like I, I would have never dreamed when I was, you know, if if, if you know, I'm 34 now. If 34 year old me would have walked up to 16 year old me in high school and said, "Yo, you're gonna work on a record for Nas one day," yeah, I would have never believed it. I never would have said, "I'd have been like, yeah, you're lying." Like, no way. You know right. what I'm saying? So just just having that be a part of my life is amazing. Right. So, is there any other artist that you're inspired, or you do you want to work with in the future, or oh, that's something too? <laughs> it's it's uh, I'm the the artist I get the most excited about 
is are the artists that I that I uh kind of grew up on. So like recently right. I just did an album for an artist named Blood Orange, who's my boy. He's great, amazing artist, amazing producer, writer, dope. Um, he did a he did a song with uh, on his album with ASAP Rocky and mm-hmm. Project Pat, mm-hmm. um, and I love ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky's a dope rapper, but I got so hyped when the Project Pat vocals came right. in because I'm a, just a big you know I grew up listening yeah. to Project Pat, so it's like those are the artists that I that I you know love to work with. Probably you know my favorite artist of all time is Andre 3000. So I would say if I could do a record for him, if he ever comes back, that would be all a right. blessing. <laughs> so if you're hearing this, come back. <laughs> Three stacks, come back. We need you, bro. I got Shout you. On the, I got you on the mix. <laughs> yep, he's here waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But all right. So yeah, thank you for you know your time. Um, you know, inspirational words, and thank you for sharing us with your story. Thank Any you, upcoming man. projects that you're working on that you could got tell a couple us? things. Uh, the the one I can tell you guys about that's coming out soon is a uh, uh, artist named Empress of. She's uh, I met her through Blood Orange as well. She's super dope. Uh, young pop singer out of L.A. R and B pop, I don't know what she would classify herself as, but super dope, amazing album. She dropped two singles off the album already, and the the whole album comes out actually this week on on the nineteenth. Mm. So go get that. Empress of the album is called Us. And uh, if you stay tuned to my Instagram, Mixed by Blue, or my Twitter, Mixed by Blue, I got a couple more very very exciting things that will be out by the end of the year that uh, I just can't tell you about yet. <laughs> so you got you guys gotta follow. I'm gonna put all the links below. Gotta follow up for real. These <laughs> so, are like I got you know, something coming that's one of the biggest uh-oh. things. That <laughs> we're, exci- we're excited. It's a, it's and a, then a, we got we gotta do another interview one. There time, you go. <laughs> there you go. That was another one where, when that I got we gotta the vocals. talk about. That's a full interview. That's right another there. one when I got the vocals. I was like, yo, that was that, that, so you know, but but. Stay tuned and y'all will see. And how and how can they book you again? Um, Lounge Studio NYC, right? Lounge Studios NYC dot com. I'm available to book. I think in January, maybe January. Now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, patient, so, if you're patient, holla at me. Be patient. Um, but yeah, man, the work I'm, takes time. I'm, yeah, man, I'm working you on know. a couple of things through the end of the year. But uh, but I'm here, man. You can catch me. Just plan ahead a little bit. I know that, I know artists hate to do that, but <laughs> if you want to come mess with me, just just plan ahead a little bit, and I'll be there for you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Blue, for your time, and then thanks for having me. Um, until next time, it's a pleasure. <laughs> thank man. you so thanks much for coming through. Thank you.